Have you ever looked out over a city knowing that's exactly where you want to be at that exact moment? That's Moray. That's Rome. You're listening to Travel FOMO, a podcast for people self-diagnosed with wanderlust. Welcome to Travel FOMO. I'm Hillary Halton, and I am here with my Jamin, my Jamin, <laughs> my husband, my husband Jamin. That's me. <laughs> and we are nearing the end of our Across the Pond season. So don't forget to subscribe from wherever you're listening so that you won't miss out on an episode. That's right. You're going to want to check them out. And today we are excited because we are taking a journey to Rome. Roma. I love Rome. Um, there's so many little puns I could put in here, but I'm just going to kick off starting to tell everybody what it was like and, and getting yeah. there. We arrived by um, by train mm-hmm. and then we left. We took a flight out of Rome later on. Right. But we arrived by train um, and had to come through Florence from Milan and um, I'd had a great old nap and I was ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> you did. You slept all through wine country. Oh, such a theme. So <laughs> crazy. And all through wine country, when you told me that wine country was really pretty and that I really missed it, I was like, oh, stop it. Oh, I was so bummed. I think there are a few pictures of like wine country with you in the foreground asleep. Because I was sitting on the no, aisle seat are. and you. <laughs> oh, man. It never fails that I fall asleep whenever we're traveling, when we're in transit anywhere. And it never fails that you get a photo. <laughs> <laughs> it's part of the mission. That's so so funny. Um, but we, we, we stayed in the Airbnb, um, which was really kind of a theme throughout this whole trip. Yeah. And totally recommend it. It was great. Definitely. Oh my goodness. And, you know, sometimes you might get on Airbnb and see someone speaking another language. Chances are they probably speak English too. So don't worry about it. Just go ahead and reach out to them and don't let that stop you from um, selecting whatever place you're interested in. But our Airbnb actually recommended a car service and kind of threw out a price to us and was like, hey, you know, would you guys like a car service? We could have someone come pick you up and then take you back to the to the airport and that was a pretty sweet deal yeah that ended up working out great i was i was a little apprehensive at first i was like oh what what's this gonna be is this gonna cousin eddie's gonna show up and like (laughs) we're like we're gonna have to a really uncomfortable ride right but um it was like the opposite of that it was it was a really nice car very professional driver very friendly and told us about the city a little bit. Oh, that's right. Yeah. And uh, was super helpful. Yeah, it was super helpful. And um, I don't know if he did this just for us or or if it was truly the route he was taking, but we got to see a pretty nice little look of across Rome, you know, and and the sun was setting. It was really picturesque. It was just beautiful. I honestly remember thinking, wow, like this feels like exactly what you would expect from Rome. Um, yeah, it was, just it was phenomenal. Everything like, you could imagine. Yeah, like you said, the sun going down and just seeing the city that way. And the nice thing was that it was a flat rate, so it wasn't like a taxi where you think like, oh, he's taking me the long way to like oh, roll up the numbers. But mm-hmm. like we had already paid for it and like it was a great way to start off our time there. Yeah, it was. And um and our Airbnb was great too. Oh yeah. Oh my gosh. It was like up on the what third floor mm-hmm. of this building. Um and and a lot of these buildings, um, well our driver, you reminded me a few minutes ago that he actually dropped us off several streets away because Everything was, um, the streets were so tiny and like all yeah. and winding and, and he couldn't get his car down to us. Right. He like, he apologized that he had to, he couldn't take us right to the door. He's like, but my car can't fit down there. The streets are too narrow where you guys apartment is. And, yeah. um, it's just it was kind of really a, cool. Yeah. It's just kind of charming. And, and then, you know, whenever you get to the door, it doesn't look like anything. It looks like a, what was it? A, a cast iron door or a, a large wood door. I can't remember exactly. Yeah. It was a wooden door. Yeah. But it was just pretty, 
basic. Like it didn't, you yeah. know, it, it didn't stand out. You wouldn't have known what it was um, ex- if you didn't know, you know, the apartment number. But um, yeah, and it had all kinds of stuff inside. I mean, I think a lot of people think they don't really know what to expect whenever they think about staying in another country. But mm-hmm. we had all the things we needed um, and then some of the things we wanted, like Wi-Fi and Netflix and um, we had a washing machine and there was no dryer, which was a little bit different. Yeah. But not too much of a problem because they had clotheslines where you could, you know, dry things and it was pretty warm. So it didn't really <laughs> matter. Do you remember that uh, the electricity and how it was controlled by a key, by oh. this the key to the door? That's funny. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I had never, I didn't know that this was the thing, but the key that locked and unlocked the front door, you would go inside and where a light switch would be, there was a like a place for a key and you yeah. put the key in and turn it and that would activate the electricity essentially to the whole apartment. Right. So it's pitch black when you walk in right. because there's no electricity nothing at Nothing is on. It's completely killed. And that meant every time that you left, like the air conditioner is not going to run. Anything that you've plugged in is not going to charge. Your uh, clothes aren't going to get washed and things like that. <laughs> so you kind of had to be a little strategic about like, Right when you got home at night, like, okay, charge everything, wash everything, do everything that you have to do right now, because in the morning we're going to have to leave and we're going to have to cut the power to this place. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's kind of, it's smart, but it's also just really entertaining and yeah. different, you know, from America. Um, I thought that was, that was pretty funny. And then it was so charming in, in other ways too. It was, there was a lot of exposed brick. I, yeah. Pretty much every wall was exposed mm-hmm. brick. And then within all of the brick, they had inner lane um artwork and so there was like like i want to say it's kind of sculpted artwork it's kind of like a little 3d kind of um sculpture that was um in the um in the hall i guess you could yeah, say yeah like built and into it itself built into it and there were they were all over the place at the top of each wall and then um there was also huge mirrors like just single slabs of mirror that would just be all over the apartment which also made it feel really big um, yeah well, and it, it was had already really high ceilings size. like yeah it, it did was, yeah it was a great place it was and had phenomenal. a great little bar um you know kind of that a little curved bar it was really um really charming and it was you know talking about those tiny streets it was in really close proximity to other buildings so there was a lot <laughs> was. of great natural light but you had to open up the windows to see the person next door in <laughs> right. their window. They were right there. Yeah, right there. But um but you know, that's just city life for you, I guess. So Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And it was in such a great spot too. It was right, right next to the Trevi Fountain. Mm-hmm. Like just outside of the square where kind of all the crowd is all the time around the Trevi right. Fountain. Uh, just outside that. So just far enough away that it was quiet and nice and you felt like safe and it was easy to get in and out. But uh right there kind of in the midst of of all the action and like the Trevi fountain was beautiful like we got to see it like right away that first night because after we got checked in and got dressed and went out to dinner we walked by it and it was it was amazing like tons of people but just such a beautiful thing and the crazy thing about Rome is like it's just one of like hundreds so many of things to see every corner you see something else and you're looking it up to see what is this famous thing i I mean it's just really remarkable yeah it's kind of overwhelming how much is there right but um we went to dinner that first night at uh, a restaurant that our host from the airbnb had actually recommended called that's amore yeah and it was right there by the trade fountain too Um, You couldn't make reservations, and there was quite a line. But we were like, well, the line probably means that it's good. So, like, and it's great people watching. The weather's perfect. We've been on a train all day, so it's okay to be on our feet. So we, like, waited in the line, and it was so worth it. Like, once we got to go in, we got sat at, at this table, and it was, and we were sat at a table with other people, but that's kind of how they did everything in there. Um, There wasn't an empty chair in the place and there were tons of tables and chairs just packed in there. The wait staff are like 
scooting by and right. like just barely getting by in places in between tables and chairs. And there was, it was like a table for eight and there were six people at it. And we were like, they set us at the end of that table, um, which was kind of a strange thing at first. But then you realize like, that's just what, that's how this place runs. Like they're going to get everybody in here. They can. And like the food looks so great. And, and it was so great. Like was really, really good. What, what was it that you had? Do you remember? I had gnocchi and it was so, yeah, I'll never forget. Yeah. <laughs> you can definitely ask that question. I'll never forget. Um, I had gnocchi. It was so good. Um, yeah, it was, uh, it was great. And I ended up ordering it several different times and, and it was pretty good in some other places too. I remember, you know, loving it no matter where I got it, but it was so good there. It was probably the best there. Yeah. And I had the Cat Pepe and mm-hmm. it was phenomenal there. I and kinda... that's now kind of one of your favorite dishes, yes. Italian dishes. Yeah, it, it really is. And that's the first time I'd ever had it there. And I think every time that I order it, I'm like thinking of it from that Zamore and <laughs> it's like a lot of places it's good, but it's never quite, Not quite never quite same. that. Yeah. Well, and we had that dessert that uh, Melefoge mm-hmm. that was really good. I never heard of it before. No, and... I can't pronounce it. I don't even know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, we kind of ordered on a whim, but it was so good. It's like a pastry with like cream and chocolate and it's it's kind of a layered pastry. Yeah. In fact, I think there was something else we were going to order and they were out of it. Tiramisu. Yep. Yeah. And that's what we were going to get. And they were like, that's okay. You you know, they kind of was like, no, nah, you're going to want this instead. And yeah, I was so glad we did. Yeah. It was so good. It was, it was phenomenal. Like a, a great way to start like... To start our time off in Rome with we yeah. had like, you know, in London, we had like all the <laughs> kitchens had closed up on us and by 9 p.m. Right. By nine o'clock, they? which was totally the opposite in Rome. Mm-hmm. I feel like if you were like if you were going to go to dinner at like eight, it's like, why are you here so early? Like, what's <laughs> like, what's the problem? Are you old yeah, people? Like, what's happening? They love their evenings. And so like every dinner is it's late and. Well, we'd gotten, we'd gotten we've gotten hornswoggled <laughs> in Milan into eating at the tobacco shop and not getting to eat with Papa Francesco, and so like we're still still bitter about that. You can hear about that in the most recent episode. Yeah, of you Milan. can go back and listen to Milan to find out all about that. We were swindled, <laughs> <laughs> but like that Samore kind of made up for all of it. It did like, make up for it. It was a great way to start. Our time yeah, in Rome. we were determined to make up for some of those mistakes, and we did. Yeah, that. we did. Definitely. It was a success. I feel like every place we ate in Rome, we pretty much it was pretty much a success. Yeah, and that was at yeah. the top of the list for sure. Well, and especially like in Rome, like great dinner and a glass of wine, and then kind of wherever you are. You get to walk out and walk by something incredible Mm -hmm. on the way back to your place. And that's, you know, we went back by the Treve Fountain and just got to stand there and look at it for a little bit before we wrapped up our our first night. And it was it was a great first few hours in Rome. Yeah, it really was. And um, the next morning we um, we really started the day out pretty early. Um, Yeah, we knew there was tons we wanted to see. um, And the Pantheon wasn't even open yet. That's how early we were. Yeah, (laughs) I Um, I was really disappointed that we didn't get to go in. Um, You know, we did get to see the outside of it, mm -hmm. kind of the square there. Yeah. But uh, yeah, they were like, oh, no, it's not open yet. Yeah. um, And it's even I was looking it up recently. And it's a functioning church, which I think is really interesting, too. And I would um, really be interested in going back sometime and attending a service there, I think, would be fascinating. Yeah, that um, would be incredible. Yeah. And it's one of the first pagan churches that um, was converted to Christianity, which is also, I think, really interesting. And um, Yeah. And, and one of the oldest Roman structures to still be um, functioning and still be like a, a complete buildings yeah. yeah yeah that's really cool and um and we also went to the vatican city that day that was part of the reason why we woke up so early because we had yeah, we were headed to the vatican. a big bad tour the, i say big bad is in like 
oh my gosh, we had such a legit tour at the Vatican City. And we're actually not even going to talk about it in this episode because there's so much great content there. You guys are going to hear about that next week. Um, it We really felt like it's a little country of its own, so it deserves a episode of its own. But totally, totally recommend it. And I will just say tours, you know... <laughs> People have different opinions about tours, but man, that tour um, was a game changer for me in terms of how much I appreciate a really good tour guide and a really great tour. So yeah, I can't, can't wait, wait to tell you about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's going to be sure. really good. When you're planning a trip, what are the tools that you use? Have you ever thought about a way to do it better, to plan more efficiently, to save money and optimize your time? We all have some kind of limits to our resources, our time, money, energy. Let's find a way to make the most of them. Let's find a way to help each other take the best possible memories with us when we head home from a journey. If your product does that, let's get together and share it here. And then what else did we do? Um, we packed the day full of stuff. Yeah, that uh, later that day we went and saw uh, Peter's Prison, um, which you can go and tour. Like you pay a little bit, and they've got kind of a museum of of old Rome and and artifacts that were found on the place. And then you actually get to go down into um, the prison itself, where Peter Saint Peter was held. And I remember kind of being struck by the juxtaposition of like St. Peter's Basilica, which Peter never actually saw, but was like built in his honor and like paintings of him, a statue of him that people line up to see. And then like just the vast difference between that and the prison where he was held. And it's this yeah. dark, you kind of go down into this dark cellar and it's exactly what you would think a Roman prison would be like and and it's all right there in the same city where he was yeah you know, destroyed and then later celebrated but he never got to see that amazing basilica right yeah. right the the part of rome that he knew was that prison and yeah. it, there's a like there's a a weight to that place that you can feel especially kind of when you go down in there that you just feel this this weight of that of that room and of just the significance of it. Yeah. It got cold real fast too. I remember, mm -hmm. um, you know, it was pretty hot outside, Yeah, but then you go down into this, um, you know, the prison and it got cold really fast. There's actually a stream of water down there, which I thought was like really surprising. Um, but it just gives it this coldness that kind of chills you. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was something else. And, and where it's located, you basically come out of it and you're able to walk out onto this uh, sort of observation area that looks out over the Roman forum. Yeah. Um, Great view. Yeah. Which is incredible to see. It's one of those things that pictures just don't, don't do it justice until you see it and you look out over it and uh, just those ruins of, of what was like the epicenter of the world right at its time and they've it's so much land too that they've protected so much um mm -hmm. old architecture that has started to crumble and everything but it's all very well protected and i was just surprised at how big it was yes. i i don't yeah. think um i'd been before and hadn't fully comprehended how much of that space was the roman form like it was just really interesting um it's just a a lot of land that is now roped off and um kept kept pristine and untouched yeah it uh it's incredible to see and you kind of you can see out and from where peter's prison is it's it's up on this hill and you can see out across everything and you can see the coliseum out in the distance and um it really is a breathtaking view of these ruins and this open space inside this this city yeah and uh, and that was really what was it the roman forum was really used as like the main area where business happened right right Is, am yeah, i remembering was, that right yeah okay. that's kind of where everything took place was like all right there yeah so it's a pretty big deal and of course it's really close to the coliseum yeah, which we then, like, we walked over and saw the Coliseum. We didn't actually get to go inside, um, 
we had, I think we ended up walking like 15 miles that day in, <laughs> in yeah, total of everything like we did, that. but we just wanted to see so much. Mm-hmm. And there's so much of Rome to see. But we did go, like we took some pictures in front of the Colosseum and we didn't actually go inside, but we got to see it. Um, and then we, like, we started heading back and uh, we noticed that, like, they're, like, setting up barricades and grandstands and, like, something is, like, yeah, like something's is about happening? to happen. Right. Yeah. It was all, um, yeah, a lot of barricades. It was kind of hard to get around things mm-hmm. and to, you couldn't just walk on the streets as normal. Um, and then we found out the next day. <laughs> <laughs> you think we would have, like, figured it out sooner. But the next day was a national holiday. It was basically their 4th of July, their uh, Festa della Repubblica, um, I believe is how you say it. And um, that was really fun. Yeah. Like, we just had no idea that we were there during um, a holiday. Holiday. It was right. great. Um, and so um, that we ended up getting to see, um, what was it? There was a huge parade mm-hmm. um, and it was right there at the Capitol, which the Capitol, I will say, oh, yeah. is pretty impressive. Yeah. And I remember being like, what is that building? That is really cool. It's just got this some really um I believe the road parts um, mm-hmm. to either side of it, and um, and it just you kind of look up at this um, huge staircase and these huge um, figurines, and um, it's very well done. And then so there's a parade going on all, all around it. You see, you've got bands, you've got um, military people, all kinds of stuff happening in the streets. And then up above you, um, it was a beautiful day, and um, they had fighter jets coming through, just like you'd yeah. see in America uh, with the Blue Angels. Um, Fighter jets coming through with the um, red, white, and green colors of their flag streaming behind them. And um, we actually have uh, some some cool photos. I can't believe I was able to capture a photo because they they were so fast. And keep in mind, the streets of Italian cities are so narrow and small that you don't have a lot of space up above your head to capture that moment. But, um, yeah, I was, I was impressed that you got like, cause you got some legit pictures of it. Like yeah, they were really I was good. Determined. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, that was so fun though. And, um, it was just such a, um, festive day and then something you're not expecting, which was even more fun to get to see that happen. And, um, we also got to go That's shopping. Cool. Yeah, we went shopping that day. Um, we had decided like that we would leave a little room in our bags and a little room in our budget mm-hmm. for us to buy something while we were um, on vacation somewhere yeah. and um, something more legit that we could bring back. And we decided like clothes or something of that nature would kind of be it. And um, we ended up finding like I know I bought a pair of shoes um, that I like really really like and still wear like as often as i dare do you remember Um, what i bought uh you bought shoes too right yeah yeah but um same same brand um uh how do we say it uh piccolonis uh Uh, piccolinos yeah yeah and um yeah very cool italian leather shoes that's what we were gonna go home with and we (laughs) did yeah like it was it was great and we got to shop around and we like we did some shopping in like shops like that, and then we also did like some street, like street vendor kind of shopping, and mm-hmm. walked around. And of course, when you're shopping, like there's gelato shops everywhere, so you gotta go shop there a little when, bit too. Literally, when in <laughs> Rome. <laughs> yeah, we had some um, great meals too, just the whole time we were in Rome. Yeah, I feel like there there were hardly any bad meals like it was yeah. it was mostly good places and like we did like you're great about doing a little research and getting on Yelp or, right. or something and that. finding yeah. a good a good spot for us I love to us. look forward to food <laughs> <laughs> but it was good i think we discovered like what mozzarella is supposed to be we had no idea there. like we ordered it once as an appetizer I yeah, like a like, caprese salad or something. Yeah, something. And the mozzarella there, and we and we did it early on, and so we started getting it everywhere, and it was so good. It's so oh moist goodness. and just completely different than than anything I've had 
right here and it's like they almost just um sit it in milk too so it's like it's very much like um a wet dish Yes. Um, which in America, I've never experienced it like that. And that was just, I mean, it literally felt like it was popping in my mouth. Like it was so good and <laughs> so different than any mozzarella I'd had in America. Yeah. And like the <clears throat> Rome will make you go at a vacation pace. Mm. I feel like a lot a lot of it is is set up for that because a lot of it is whether it's taking in something like you're looking at something like the Trevi Fountain or the Pantheon or something that you're you're really like looking at something beautiful and just taking it in or the Spanish steps. We went to the Spanish steps mm, yeah. uh, a couple of times, like once during the day and um, once in the evening and people are just sitting there like looking out over the city or looking up at the steps there's a fountain at the bottom and and you just kind of take your time to to let it soak in and um even the the way they do their meals you know like they you'll get set and then someone will come around and they'll take your wine order you'll get some good wine and then eventually you'll order your food and eventually it'll come out and then you'll ask for your check and it'll like and it'll be a while before yeah. your check comes out and they'll bring some limoncello or something like that. And um, and and by a while, we do mean a while, like it could be 30 minutes or I mean, I feel like there yeah. were times where we were like, wow, we were done a long time ago and we're just waiting. And and as Americans um, with very little time in this beautiful city you're really just thinking how do I get on to the next thing like I right. so badly want to see these other things <laughs> and I'm looking at the clock wondering if you know are we going to be able to make it on time and um and so that's something you kind of just have to be prepared for yeah especially at dinner allow plenty of time yeah um for like whatever you think is a long time like I'll allow a little bit longer allow a little bit longer <laughs> yeah well but said. uh yeah it's such a great such a great place and just so many beautiful things so much to take in the food the the culture the the art it's um it's all really incredible and just a beautiful place yeah we definitely enjoyed our time in Rome, and we are so excited to tell you guys about the things that we discovered in Vatican City, um, and that'll yes. be in our next episode. Oh my goodness. If you feel like there is a little something missing from this episode, that's okay, because there is, and it is Vatican City, and we cannot wait to share that with you guys. It's going to be so great, so be sure to hit subscribe from wherever you're listening, um, and that'll make sure you get a notification whenever that episode comes out, and then help us out by rating and reviewing and you can also learn more about us at travelfomopodcast.com that's right and we want to know about a city that you fell in love with where you felt yeah. amore like you're this is exactly where i want to be where did you travel to that you just loved uh post about it on social media and tag us in it uh, we want to see what's going on out there you can find us on instagram facebook tiktok and youtube and that's where we'll post some pictures of our own. That's right. And we will see you guys next week in Vatican City. Life is short. Wander well. Wander well.